Hello History 121. For every chapter, we will have a short chapter summary. And we will start out with chapter 1, The Birth of Civilization. This chapter relates the development of human culture in the Paleolithic and Neolithic ages and discusses the early civilizations of places like Mesopotamia, Egypt, and the Near East, which would include the Hittites, the Kassites, Mitanni, the Assyrians, and the Israelites. It also contrasts the worldview of these Near Eastern civilizations with that of the Greeks. The chapter begins by describing the tools and implements used by the Paleolithic man in his hunter-gatherer existence. This is then contrasted by the Neolithic Revolution that occurred about 6000 BCE and brought with it agriculture, the domestication of animals, and other attendant social, labor, and role changes. This agricultural revolution enabled people to live in more or less permanent settlements that were first established in the Tigris and Euphrates river valleys in Mesopotamia around 3,500 3, BCE, and shortly afterwards along the Nile River in Egypt. The Sumerian culture grew in southern Mesopotamia near the Persian Gulf. They established the social, economic, and intellectual foundations of Mesopotamian culture and were followed by Akkadians and Babylonians who united the region. These people contributed important advancements in technology, such as the bronze tools and other weapons, writing, cuneiform, law, mathematics, education, and religious thought. Hammurabi's Law Code reflects the desire for discipline and order in society, and yet Mesopotamian civilization is pessimistic in outlook. Egyptian civilization developed somewhat differently from Mesopotamia. Its geographical isolation, bordered as it is by desert and water, and the unity encouraged by the Nile River, gave rise to centralized political control. Pharaonic authority was generally strong as evidenced by the pyramids of the Old Kingdom and the imperialism of Thutmose III and Ramses II. The text then emphasizes the Armana Revolution and the monotheistic worship of Aten by the pharaoh Akhenaten. In addition, the development of Egyptian language and literature is noted, as it is a description of Egyptian gender and social relations. The chapter continues with an account of the contributions of the Hittites, most famous for the smelting of iron, and especially the Assyrians who established an empire by 665 B.C., that included Palestine, Syria, and most of Asia Minor down to the Persian Gulf in the southeast. In addition to maintaining and ruthlessly exploiting their empire, the Assyrians served as a buffer to the civilized Middle East against the barbarians on the frontiers. Their empire finally fell because of internal revolution and a defeat in 612 BCE by the Neo-Babylonians, also known as the Chaldeans. An account of the rise of the Persian Empire under, under Cyrus II, or Cyrus the Great, and Darius follows. Persian culture thrived by virtue of its ability to borrow from Mesopotamian and Egyptian art and culture and shape these elements as something distinctly Persian. Zarathustra, who strongly influenced Persian religious practice, is credited for bringing about a significant shift in religious thought. After briefly noting the Canaanite and Phoenician cultures, the chapter turns its, its attention to the Israelites. While the empires of the Mideast rose and fell, the most important intellectual development was that of the Hebrew religion. The Israelites, or Hebrews, were a people, much like the Phoenicians, who flourished in the political vacuum left by the weakening of the Egyptian empire and the annihilation of the Hittites around 1200 BCE. The Israelites were responsible for a religious revolution founded on the concept of a single universal God who had a covenant with his chosen people. God was a just God, or just judge, who required obedience to his laws. The chapter draws near a close with a summary and overview of the general outlook of the ancient Middle Eastern cultures. In contrast to these cultures, the early Greeks tried to understand the, wor the world without reference to supernatural powers, but rather with emphasis on logic and observation. In this and in other ways, the Greeks differed radically from Near Eastern thought.